Welcome to the B-Scar TV podcast, the home of high-quality conversation. And we're back. And we're back with another episode of B-Scar TV. And I have a very, very special guest today, my dog, Kareem Jackson, a.k.a. K-Jack, a.k.a. Jack Boy, no mask. All that. What's up, man? What's up, man? How we living? I'm great, man. How about you? I'm good. It's been a minute. I'm good. Uh, it's been a minute, <clears throat> and this is uh, this is a full circle moment because B Scar TV only exists because K Jack TV did it first. K Jack TV walked so B Scar TV could run. <laughs> when you was a player <laughs> reporter in the locker room uh, in Houston. And you left. They were looking for a replacement. They were trying to figure out how we gonna replace this social media programming. And at first, it was supposed to be me and B Mac. Right. It was gonna be like B Mac and Cheese. That was the name that they had came B-Mac up with. B Mac and Cheese. B Mac and Cheese was the <laughs> name that they had came up with. Didn't work out with B Mac. So then it was B Scar TV. And I tell you, the fans weren't happy at first. They weren't. They weren't happy. Man, they were shame on them. We need K Jack TV back. That's what that's what that that's what was in the comments. Shame on them, man. Shame on them. Yeah, man. But you uh you've been doing it for a minute, bro. Yeah, to say the least. Fourteen season. Fourteen. Yeah. Time flies, man. Time flies. Fourteen. How you feeling? I'm actually feeling pretty good, to be honest. Um, I mean, obviously, it takes a lot. Uh, recovery, all that's you know, good stuff. But feeling pretty good, though. Feeling pretty good. Yeah. Feeling pretty good. I mean, I, I imagine at this point, <clears throat> your regiment from a recovery standpoint is probably pretty solid. Yeah. Is it pretty extensive? It, does it still evolve year over year, or has it been pretty much the same over the past um, few years? Pretty much the same. I'll add stuff, you know, um, if I need, if I need it, if I need to. Uh, right. But. It, for the most part, it's pretty much the same. Um, let's try to, you know, if it ain't broke, don't, you know, don't fix. So I, I just, just kind of leave it alone. But like I said, depending on how I'm feeling and if I'm dealing with anything, mm-hmm. pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah, I remember back in the, the training room in Houston, I uh, used to put hours in, in that training room. I remember you and uh, Ro would have your session like every day. Yeah. Later on though, it'd be after everybody had left and you'd get your work in. Yeah. That was young Jack though. Now now that thing even longer like <laughs> um type first one in, last one out type of stuff. Really? But um yeah. Uh I mean it takes a lot, like I said, man, but um I mean it is what it is at this point, man. It's like a it's like having a I don't know if you've had like a older car. Mm-hmm. Um when that that thing sit for a while is, you know, yeah. won't crank, you know, start to rust. So yeah, it might not start on the man, first try. You gotta constantly. It's it, it takes work, constant, constant work, man. But um, I mean, it's part of the routine, and you know, and it, and the crazy thing about it is like it for me. If I don't do it, I feel like something's off. So mm. I mean, it comes with the territory. Yeah. yeah, you say that's every day of the week. Every day. Every day. Every day. Even, you know, now, obviously, being in the situation that I'm in and dealing with, you know, being suspended still, you know, is, right. you know, routine for me, just trying to, you know, keep the habits and stuff going. Yeah. You know, keep my body into it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and when I was talking earlier about all of uh, the different positions that you've played over your yeah. career and being in Houston, just in your stint in Houston, went from playing corner – uh, when you were drafted, first round draft pick from Alabama, you were drafted as a corner. Yep. Played that for the first few years. Then you went to slot corner and then made a transition to safety, which you're playing now. Right. <clears throat> and uh, the versatility to be able to do all of those things is one is, I mean, it's a testament to like athleticism and then also the longevity piece to be able to do those things over 14 seasons. I'm curious for you uh, to hear your thoughts on how the game has evolved and being able to kind of see the defensive backfield from every position that you have 
how has the evolution of the game of football changed the game for defensive the defensive backfield? Right. Um, I mean, obviously, being drafted in 2010, um, it was I think it was kind of getting to more of a open field space. You know, guys just playing in space. You know, right. um, uh, type of game. Um, I think then you had more of the strong and free safety mm -hmm. type guys, you know, in the back end, you know, uh, you had your field and your boundary corners. Um, now it's just, you know, wide open, right. all space. Cause you even have, your, obviously your linebackers now are more like safeties. Yeah, facts. I mean, and, and you know, more cover guys, you know, you no know more of the 250 pound linebackers that you know, downhill, hitting their heads off the wall type guys, you know. Um, even your running backs, you got guys that are three down backs, more passing, you know, more pass catchers. Right. Um, so, in that aspect, the, the game has definitely, you know, evolved. Uh, for me, you know, um, I think with that, you know, I obviously – with the game evolving and, you know, playing all these different positions, um, my body, my body type box, I had to change that. I changed that. Um, and I had to because playing the corner position, you know, I think I, when I got drafted, I might've been like 195, 197. Mm. Now I play at like 185. Oh, really? Yeah. I played 185 and um, I don't know if you remember Coach, Coach VJ. Um, was he there when, when you? When you <clears throat> I don't think so. So it might have uh -huh. been after. So uh, my DB coach, actually, he got the job my second year, who's now a D coordinator here in Denver. Um, when he first got there, he told me, man, he's like, I think you should change your body, you know. So I went from like a more bulkier player yeah. to more of a slimmer, you know what I'm saying, Bill. Um, that's, that's interesting because you feel like you'd get – bigger if you're going from corner to safety yeah. but you've actually gotten smaller yeah smaller smaller um and i changed my body my second year and that was you know it was a tremendous change for me as far as like you know uh helping me mm -hmm. um just being slimmer i mean i i think a lot of guys think you know if you're bigger then you'll be a better a ta uh, better tackler yeah but for me um obviously that that never affected me um and I think just tackling is just all will and want to anyway. Mm. But um, that's probably like the biggest change as far as the game being more playing in a being played in the phone booth. Now yeah. it's just open field. Like yeah. everything's just all about matchups. Everything's just you know trying to get guys in one on one situations or you know your best guy on you know uh, a linebacker or whoever. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I think that's probably the biggest. Yeah, Evolution. yeah, it's definitely the game has gotten faster and it's gotten smaller too. For sure, and For I sure. I saw it, have seen it from <clears throat> the outside linebacker perspective, right? And even just the time that I've been in the league, when I came in in 2016, having a bigger outside linebacker that was really setting that edge that was in, in really important, and then you'd have kind of like your pass rushing, you know, ace that come in on third down or whatever. But now you look at outside linebackers. I mean, a lot of them are, are smaller, smaller, faster. Just a linebacking crew in general, smaller, faster. Some dudes that you know they could cover in the inside linebacker, but you know guys who are just there to pass rush really and setting the edge isn't as important as it used to be because a lot of these offenses are going sideline to sideline and they're looking to cut it back regardless of where the edge is set. Right. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a different game, man. From even sixteen when you got drafted, and definitely you know two thousand ten when I got drafted, we had your, you know, your Adrian Petersons, you know, those guys like that. Um, and then a bunch of teams are running this West Coast, you know, um, offensive schemes where it's all predicated off of you know the cutbacks, you know, yeah. wide zone, trying to get outside and, you know, cutbacks and all that stuff. So it kind of eliminates the whole, you know, edge setter. Mm -hmm. I mean, linebacker. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's different. It's different, man. Yeah. And, I mean, <clears throat> the evolution of, of the game and how it's played has also come with the evolution of the rules. 
in certain yeah. rule changes. And yeah. obviously you were just suspended <clears throat> last week because of a, a violation of unnecessary roughness. Right. And I think, you know, from my personal kind of perspective, I think that the evolution of these rule changes is not, it is actually outpacing the way that we're coaching positions and that positions are being coached. Right. Because you just said tackling is about want to and will. Yep. Right. It's will and want to. And from the minute that you put some pads on, hitting somebody hard and striking the fear into them yeah. and removing the receiver from the ball is like, you know, what's your coach to do and you're rewarded to do and you move on right. to the next level because you're able to do that. And now, you know, rules have changed where, you know, defenseless receivers, you can't hit them. You know, it's supposed to be head and neck area, but there was a the hit that you were suspended on where it doesn't didn't seem like it came to the head and neck area. Right. So, I mean, I think it's uh, it's an interesting time right now. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's so much grayer. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I mean, at the end of the day, for me, it obviously makes our job harder because as a safety, you know, a lot of these things you're – being taught as far as tackling, right? you know. Um, yeah. And not only that, for me, being an instinctive player, you know, um, preparing all week, film, practice, if I'm in these situations where I'm able to, you know, bang, bang plays and all, like that, for me, that's good. Because that, that means, you know, I, I understand and I know what's happening or I understand, you know, what this offense is trying to do, you right. know. Uh, so as a player, if I'm in these situations, that means I can affect the game. If I'm two, three steps behind, he catches the ball, you know, whatever, that means I, I ain't really understand what was happening there or I don't know mm -hmm. as a player what's happening, you yeah. know. Um, but I feel like it, it's making the game so hard, man, and it's kind of diminishing, you know, what we do as players as far as our preparation and, and – in our practice habits, um, mm. like I said, because if, if you're an instinctive player and you prepare the right way and you understand, you know, your opponent and, and, and what, you're seeing, what you're seeing defensively, um, you're going to be in these situations two to three times a game. You're going right. to be in these bang-bang situations. I mean, yeah. that gives you a chance to make plays. That gives you a chance to affect the game mm. and help your team. But if you're – if they're diminishing – you know, what you do as a player by saying, oh, this guy's defenseless. Right. You know, um, it, it, it makes it – it kind of makes it hard to affect the game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, obviously, you try to play within the rules. But at the same time, I mean, it's, it's diminishing, you know, what you do defensively and what – you know, how you can affect the game as a defender and as a safety. Yeah. And so you're saying – <clears throat> to be able to make the plays that you're you've been able to make, to be able to make those hits and make those tackles, you actually you have to be in the right place at the right time. You have to, you have to. I mean, that's what we get paid for, right? Um, I, I mean, think that's and, and that that's I feel like left out of the yeah. narrative around. Oh, that's a dirty hit, right? No, that's not a dirty hit. That's just. A guy catches the ball, and I'm I'm right there. I'm hitting yeah, him right as soon as he catches. Where I supposed to be? <laughs> you know right, I mean? right. That's, that, for me, if I'm doing that, like I can affect the game and I can help my team because my coach is saying good job. Like, yeah, you know what I mean, right. So it's just and like, every coach that you've had over your whole yeah, career would say you, good job. That's what you teach. <laughs> yeah, that's right. what you teach. If I was coaching little league football and then and and I'm teaching these kids, you know. My thing, yeah, I'm teaching them be to be here at this time, like yeah. to make a play. Mm -hmm. You know, like so for so long you've been taught that, and then now it's just like ah, you basically you yeah you're hitting them you're too hard. You're doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah you're doing it wrong. Yeah. I, I I don't I can't understand that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's it's so hard for us as defenders to be able to affect the game. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you don't get your hands on the ball, you want to obviously create a collision as a player to, to let them, hey, I'm here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So that, and, and then not only that, in these situations, say I, 
I hit you and you fumble the ball, we scoop and score, or we get the ball here in plus territory in the red zone and stuff like that. You know what I mean? That's what football is about, you know, as a player. That's when you go out there on Sundays, you're saying, how can I affect the game, help my team? But they're diminishing a lot of it because of these rules, um, the unnecessary roughness and all that. Like, I, I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, and it's all over the field, too. And I think we have a certain perspective because we're defensive players. Yeah. You know, when they put in the rule that you can't put all your weight down on a on a quarterback, you know, uh, for defensive linemen. And so you got guys halfway tackling and then basically, like, diving at the end and putting your, their arms out. Like, all right. You know, our jobs as defenders – yeah, you know I mean, it, it, and it's just making it so much, so much harder. Like, yeah, I mean, we're still playing football. It's not flag football. Mm -hmm. if you don't want guys to get hit. Just put us in flags. Mm. I mean, but it's making the game so much harder, man. Um, but it's 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 it's, it's out of control. It's yeah. out of control. Yeah, and then you went through you that first they had suspended you for four games. Four, yeah, four. And then you went through an appeal process. Yeah. What was that appeal process like? Uh, it was basically, I actually had to do it on Zoom. Um, I had a few people on, the GM was on, Coach okay. Sean was on, the head coach. Um, another one of our guys was on, um, front office guys, uh, my agent. Then you have a couple people from the league. Um, it's my first time actually having to do it like this. Um, it's usually just a phone call. Usually with just Derek a phone Brooks. call, yeah. yeah. But, um. We had to do – it was Zoom this time. Derrick Brooks and everybody else I just named. Uh, even the appeal process, like, is – is like, I, I I remember after after doing it, I kind of told our GM, I was just like, we could have just sent in an email. We wasted, we just wasted an hour all day. Because, I, I mean, I, I think they give you – they put it out there – like the four games and automatically, and I feel like in in their minds they already know. All right, well, if they appeal, we'll cut down. They whittle so it down. Yeah, right, right, yeah. But it's like you get on the appeal, and even to this day, it's still like I have no answers as to how I'm supposed to play the game moving forward. Mm. So we get on, they listen to you, and then he's like, "All right, well, I get back to y'all with a uh, with my decision." And I, I remember asking a question, and he basically cut me off. He's like, "You can't address." Uh, so I asked, I asked one of the lawyers, I think one of the league lawyers, because obviously he's campaigning for the league to suspend me or whatever. So I asked him a question, and Derek Brooks was like, "No, you can't address him. You can only address me." I said, "So what? Well, can you answer my question then?" And he was like, "I'm not answering questions right now. You know, uh, you send it in, and I get back to you as soon as possible." And I'm like. And my question to them was like, okay, well, how do I proceed forward once I do come back from suspension? Because I'm still going to be in these situations. I'm still going to be in these bang bang situations where I can either get my hands on the ball or either it's going to be a hard tackle right. because of my preparation and that I'm a, an instinctive player. Like if you're an instinctive guy, like you're gonna like you're gonna see a lot of stuff happen before it actually mm -hmm. happens. Like. Right. So you're going to always be in those situations. And he's just like, yeah, we're not answering questions right now. You can send it in and, you know. Yeah. And I'm still just like, I, I don't know how I proceed forward. Yeah. I don't know how I play the game moving forward. Yeah, that's crazy. Because it's, uh, I mean, for, like, first of all, a four-game suspension, that's that's a lot. I mean, that's a yeah, it's crazy. That's a quarter of the season, crazy. damn near. And that's, and yeah. this is. This is our livelihoods, right? Like crazy. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of money in those four games, right? That you're trying to put food on the table, you're trying to support your family, all right. these different things. And okay, yeah, it's cut down to two, but that's still not nothing to, to still, laugh at. Yeah, you know, it's no, a good, it's a sizable amount of money. Like so, then not to have any coaching through the process. Like okay, you're telling me I'm I'm wrong, but then you're not telling me how I'm supposed to do it differently. You know, and I think uh, that gray area, I think, becomes will become tougher and tougher, like for uh, for players. And I don't, I don't know then how 
you kind of fix the whole system of it. Right. Right. Because like, so now do we need to start coaching players differently on how they're tackling in college and high school and in little league or, you know, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a whole system that it seems like is, is a little bit flawed all the way through the appeal process. No, it definitely is. But even with that though, like, what other way do you teach tackling if you're a coach? Yeah. I mean, like, the alternative is I can go low and blow out ACLs left and right. And I'm, I'm 100% sure a guy would rather get hit high than get his 100%. knee blown out. Yes. I played against guys. Every time I play against OBJ, he come to me the first play of the game. He said, please don't hit me low, hit me high. So you rather me go low and blow these guys' knees out and then I still be seen as a dirty guy. So, right, right, right. But you I'm being labeled as a dirty guy because I'm I'm just knocking the hell out of guys. Like that's it's football. That's, <laughs> that's what we're supposed, supposed to do. To do. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I remember right. when I first got drafted, they used to put your ass on a uh, a segment on ESPN and just say you got jacked up. Now it's being frowned upon. You got guys in the Hall of Fame for that, for knocking the hell out of guys. Steve Atwater. One of the hardest hitting safeties there is. He's in the Hall of Fame. That's what he did. You know what I mean? Like, so now it's just like, you want me to apologize for it? Mm. I don't I don't get that. I don't understand it. We're still playing football. Mm. All right. Now, if we didn't have on any pass, we was in flags and we were playing two hand touch and I right. knocked the hell out of you then, I can understand right. it. But we're in pass. Like, it's football. Like, yeah. That's. I thought that's how we're supposed to play. Yeah. What I appreciate about what, you know, some of the real changes that the league has done is really having an emphasis on, like, the head and neck area. Yeah. Not hitting guys with your head, not spearing them. Yeah. Right? Because back in the day, that's that's how cats were hitting. Right. Yeah, if they no, could spear you with yeah, the top of the helmet, yeah, they would. But they were putting themselves at risk and then the player that they were hitting at risk, too. So I like those those rules, but it seems like, now these kind of like these bigger collisions are now kind of getting bundled all into that, which they're two separate things though. Nah, for sure. Like for if you sure. hit a guy with your shoulder, you hit him high, you're just hitting him hard. And now we're basically what we're talking about is the timing at which you hit him relative right. to when he either catches the ball or, I mean, in that, in that case on your last hit, it was just when he, when he caught the ball, right. but it was also his own, you know, he had a couple of back pedals, like he was off balance, yeah. but that's not, you know, that's not your fault. And and my thing is, what do I do if if you're if you're gonna flag me and eject me? What do I do moving forward? So if I'm in that situation again, what am I supposed to do? Just let them fall and then tag them, or right, or what? Right. Say he keep his balance. I don't hit him, and he run up the sideline. Now my yeah. coach is looking at me like, "Damn, why you ain't tackle him?" Mm-hmm. So it's, it's it's so much gray area, and for me, I hate gray area. I hate it. Yeah, I'm a black and white guy. I hate gray yeah. area. Like so, it's it's so hard, man. Being a defender, the rules are, uh, it, and yeah. I and I like I said, I I think it's no clarity when it comes to the rules. I mean, everything's so iffy because that same day, the uh, there was a corner from Seattle. I think he knocked the hell out of one of the receivers from Arizona. Mm-hmm. And my yeah, question, yeah, my question is, how is the guy that I hit more defenseless than that guy? Right. You know what I mean, if if that's what we're calling, like you know, yeah. So what makes my the guy that I hit more defenseless than this guy getting hit? And then not being flat. I think that I think the league reposted it, like praising them. Like, so I don't. I it's 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 no clarity, and it's too much gray area when it comes to the rules. So yeah, it's just it's just shitty. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> Tom Brady came out and he talked about how the league was getting soft, and basically yeah. I think he said that same thing. Like we should just they want us to play flag football. Right. A little ironic because they started putting a lot of these defensive player rules in to protect quarterbacks yeah. like Tom Brady, but then for him to come out and say that, you know, he thinks that it's being taken a little too far. Um you know, it's uh it's just uh, it's a uh, it's it's signs that the game is changing and I think that the NFL understands that people 
they're going to watch to see score, points scored, right. right? And so how do we, you know, manage the game in such a way where the offenses do have an advantage? I don't think that's a, a secret at all, you know. And, uh, you know, I think it just needs – there needs to be some more clarity, especially when we're talking about suspensions, we're talking about fines, and, you know, it's a, it's a solid amount of money, right? And we're yeah, talking about sure. guys – guys' livelihoods, you know, and uh, other fines, uh, I think they've they've defined really well, right? right. You can't show your knees. You know, your socks got to be pulled up over your knees. Keep if you them. get fined yeah. for that, then all right. Now, that that's, that's black and white. Hitting a defenseless receiver, that's, you know, to your point, there's a, there's a gray area. And now we're, we're talking about guys uh, being uh, confused or not really understanding how to – not get fined, not get money taken out of the pockets. I mean, it's, I don't know. I, I mean, I and when I did my appeal, I, I wanted to go to New York to actually do it like face to face because I want them to explain and show me mm -hmm. how I'm supposed to, you know, operate in these situations. Like, yeah, if you can't explain or you can't show me, then that, that alone should tell you like the rules is it's it's too much gray area. Yeah. It's too much gray area. <clears throat> I saw uh Justin Simmons gave a good press conference and before he had started he uh talked about how you'd influenced him and his game and he said he, he wouldn't be half the player that he was without your guidance and being in the room with you and you know, also came to bat for you saying that you're I mean, you're not a dirty player, you're actually the opposite of that. You know, a guy that's well intentioned, and you know, I can attest to that. I've played with you back in Houston, and uh, I'm curious how it uh, made you feel to have not just Justin Simmons, but also guys in the organization come to bat for the type of person and, and player that you are. Um, man, Justin's my guy, man. Like, it's my fifth year playing with him, man. And talking about an unbelievable guy, like probably one of my favorite teammates of all time mm -hmm. like and obviously I spent a lot of time with him um so it's pretty much like one of my best friends at this point now you know what I mean yeah. uh, but um just to you know to hear hear his words um as well as some of the other guys man it's just um for me man it's it's uh it, w it was cool to hear those guys say that stuff man uh, to come to, to to you know come to my defense you know in these situations, yeah. Um, when stuff like that happens, um, and for me, I mean, I know my heart, man. I know for me, uh, playing the game, I'm passionate about the game. You know, I go out, I play, I play that way. You know, um, I don't think anybody I've ever played with or if I I played against can say that I'm a dirty player. Like I. To me, dirty players are guys that, you know, are doing stuff, you know, that you that aren't within the rules. Obviously, the rules have changed now, but when I say yeah. that, I'm saying, like, you know, trying to, you know, it, it's guys over the, over the years that's been in trouble for, like, spitting in guys' faces right. and, like, stomping on guys' legs and just all kind of wild shit, man. I, yeah. I, I'm not doing anything wild. Like, I'm playing a game. Um, playing a game that I that I love and play ever since I was a kid. I just play it, you know, and with a bit of an attitude. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. that's how I was taught to play the game. Jack boy. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, I mean, but those, I mean, Justin for sure, man. The rest of the guys, man, I definitely appreciate that, man. And like you said, um, I mean, I've been around, I spend a lot of time with these guys, been around them a lot, man. And so they definitely know the type of person I am, the type of player I am. And 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 that's one of the things that the reasons why I've been in the league for so long, because of how I play the game. You yeah. know what I mean? But, um, man, I love those guys to death, man. And, and I definitely appreciate that. Yeah. When you, uh, you said you know your heart, right? And, and regardless of the narratives out there in the, in the media or, or fans or whatever, you know the type of person and player you are but does the the language and the narratives out in the media does that influence you does that does that bug you at all 
Not at all. No. Not at all. I mean, you've been through 14 seasons, so yeah, you've seen, you seen all types of tweets. All kind of stuff. <laughs> and it's funny because I was just uh, – I just had Pat on my show, and uh, we was talking about – you know, I asked him, you know, what was, like, the wildest, like, you know, some of the mean stuff that people say to him. Uh, he was telling a story about when he was a kid, you know, when he – I think he flipped from LSU to go to Bama. And he was saying how, you know, somebody DM'd him and his parents had to, like, step in and, like, say oh, wow. stuff, man. But um, that stuff doesn't bother me at all, man. If you got some free time, you go look at my my uh, my timeline and my, my tweets, man. I'll go back and forth with them. <laughs> I get a kick out of it. Yeah. Man. Yeah, man, it's funny, man, because I can't understand how fans think that the stuff they say, you know, has any effect on me for one, but any player, you know, how we yeah. operate, like. And then my thing is, I'm just like, I look at a lot of it, like, after the Green Bay game, it, it was, like, wow. Like, yeah, I bet. Like, people calling me the N-word, like, all kind of stuff. Like, um, I even reposted some of it on my uh, my story on IG, but, man, none of that stuff moves me, man. Um I mean, I'm quite sure none of these people never been in any of these situations. Never played, obviously, professional professionally, mm -hmm. you know, um, or any sport for that matter. So, I don't give a damn what these people say, man. Yeah. I'm going to be me regardless. So, I go back and forth with them. I enjoy it. It's, fun the, it's funny to me. What's the craziest shit somebody said to you? Um... I like being called the N word. Yeah, somebody just called me that after the Green Bay, or like I think they said, "Stop acting like an N" or something. And then um, I think another guy was just like, "I wouldn't be surprised if Denver releases you after this." And I responded, and I was like, "I wouldn't give a damn. I didn't play long enough, and I made a shit ton of money. <laughs> I'm 35." <laughs> How, how much longer you expect me to play? <laughs> I ain't in year two. Yeah. Fucking idiot. But, uh, <laughs> I don't care, man. <laughs> Yo, you know me, man. You've been in locker room yeah. for a long time. You know yeah. how I operate, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a damn about what these people think. I feel you. All right. Only thing I care about is my family and, 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 and my closest friends, like the people that I deal with on a regular basis, like. When their perception of me changes, then that'll affect me. Mm. These people that don't know me, yeah, I don't give a damn about what they think. Man. I, I mean, that's a blessing for you, Jack, because I feel like a lot of guys do get bugged by the I mean, things I'm sure that they, they see. do. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do, man. Um, and I hate that for them, but go look at my timeline, <laughs> my <laughs> tweets. Yeah, I get a kick out of it. It ain't gonna. It don't move me left or right. Mm -hmm. I get a kick out of it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. 35 years old. I'm 35, man. 35, year 14. Sheesh. It, 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 hey, well, if I'm worried about what these people that don't know me say about me and their perception of me as a player and as a man, then I got some real problems. Yeah. I got real problems. No doubt. Yeah, I don't give a damn about what these people think. How and when much they, longer you think you got? I don't know, man. I feel good. <laughs> you like fine wow. This man said thirty five. I feel good, man. I got suspended two games, so shit. I might play two more seasons. Yeah. <laughs> just to piss some people off. Yeah. My thing about it, man. I I I I love the game, man. And anybody that really likes football and really loves football, like they'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. They appreciate it, man. All this. No, for sure, bro. I mean, all this. Hitting guys too hard. What is that? Who was your favorite player growing up? My favorite player? Yeah. Who do you watch? Man, you know what? As a kid, man, I always wanted to go to University of Miami, man. So at this point in time, these Ed they, these guys were rolling. Ed Reed, Sean yeah. Taylor, yeah. all those guys, man. My favorite players. And 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 obviously getting a chance to share, you know, a locker room with Ed Reed for a little bit of time, man, mm. was uh that definitely impacted me, man. Um but yeah, man, any of those, man, I was a huge Sean Taylor fan, Ed Reed. I watch these guys all the time. Intro yeah. Roll. Yeah. 
I'm talking about, man, I, I love watching Miami, man. I wanted to go to Miami so bad, man. But then I figured I wasn't fast enough. Them dudes had real speed coming out of South Florida at that point in time. But yeah, uh, but yeah man, this, that's – Yo, I grew up watching these guys, man. So that's how I play the game. Man. Yeah. That's how I play the game, man. That's, that's how the game. game's supposed to be played, though. That's the brand of football you playing. Man, that's how the game's supposed to be played. I'm being punished for playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. In my opinion, that's how the game's supposed to be yeah. played. Yeah. Like, I mean, when I was growing up, I was watching Ray Lewis. Come on, man. Palomalu. Come on, man. <laughs> Those dudes were hidden. Dog. Hidden. And that's what made me want to really play football. Oh, man. It was like that's how the game's imposing your playing. will on the man across from you. That's how the right? game. That is how Brian Dawkins. Those guys. That's how the game's supposed to be played. We're playing football. We're playing football. If we want to get hit, put us in flags. I'm glad they two-hand touch somebody. Hmm. And still make a shit ton of money doing it. Then everybody be bitching, saying, oh, <laughs> oh it's boring. No <laughs> hits and this and this. But then when you knock the hell out of somebody, they want to complain, say, call you a dirty player. I'm being called a dirty <laughs> player for playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. <laughs> it's crazy. Come on, man. It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. No sense at it all. It doesn't make any sense. I, I never, I would have, I, I could have never, like, said, like, or imagine the game obviously going in the direction it's going. Yeah. And punishing guys just for, you know, playing the game how it was invented to be played and playing the game how it's supposed to be played. Mm. Jack, you probably you you are one of the best tacklers I've been around. Not just defensive back, but just tacklers, period. Man, I appreciate that, man. How how did you how did you get how do you get your game to be – how do you become such a good tackler? Like, you talk about these guys that you've kind of modeled your right. game after, the Sean Taylors, the Ed Reeds of the world, but how you doing it, man? <laughs> what's the, what's man, the secret, bro? I don't think it's – I don't think it's a secret, though. I I, I don't know, man. It's, it's just uh, – for one, I feel like it's mentality. Um – for me, my mentality is this is an old school mentality, man. You either the hammer or you the nail. And every Sunday, I when I go out there, and my, I mean, for me, man, I, I I like me. That's what I like to say. I like me, just in these situations. But um, I don't know, man. It's just a it's just a mindset, man. It's a going it. I'm going to kick your ass and you can't do nothing about it. Mm. I like me in every situation. <laughs> in every situation. Every situation. I'm going to bet on me. All the chips on. <laughs> all the chips on 22. Yeah. Every time. Every time. I, it's, it's, you know, just that mindset, man. I, I think I got it from my dad. And then just, you know, watching the game and watching the guys before me play the game, man. And she just, just – over and over and over, over yeah. again. You know what I mean? It's I, I I like I like my routines. I like my preparation. I like my off season workouts. I like everything I do, and 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 <clears throat> and I like to tell guys this: like, just think about all your training, off season, in season, whatever you do. Just think about. How many different, how many days you go work out or whatever you're doing to get yourself ready to play a full season? All the time you dedicate to, you know, training or whatever, your eating habits, everything. You got, think about, you're doing all of that just so you can be the best version of yourself for a guaranteed 17 days out of the year. Mm. I mean, like, so everything I do, training wise, eating habits, sleep habits, recovery wise, I like the work I put in. Yeah. And I don't know what everybody else is doing, but I know I'm busting my ass. Right. So those 17 days out of the year, I know I'm going to be ready. Mm hmm. No doubt in my mind. Yeah. I know I'm going to be ready. 
No doubt. You got to let it hang out for the I'm 17 games. I'm rocking out. I'm letting it all hang out. For yeah. 17 days. It's for a guaranteed 17 days out of the year, I'm it's letting crazy. it all hang out. Yeah. You know, I don't care who don't like it. Because it's a 365-day-a-year job. For just for seven, for a guaranteed 17, 17 days. Yeah. Not a, not counting preseason because a lot of times, you know, a lot of guys don't play preseason. So you mm-hmm. guarantee 17 17 days out of the year, you got to be the best version of yourself when it comes to your yeah. profession. After 14 seasons, does the the luster of game day, hasn't waned at all for you? Do you have to force yourself to get up for game day? Or is it is it has it become just part of the routine? It's part of the routine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I still get a kick out of it, man. I still, like, I mean, the fire's still burning. Yeah. And when it stops, that's when I'll be done. But I still get a kick out of it. I mean, it's everything, the everything, the the lead up to actually kick off, man. Um, I still get those butterflies. Mm-hmm. I still get it. Like that's why you know it's real. I still, I, <laughs> I I still get real. it. Yeah. I still. It's, you get nervous for games. I, I don't be nervous though. It's not. It's not nervous it's butterflies. Not nervous. It's just like anxious. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not nervous. Yeah. It's. It's. it's I'm I anxious. know what you mean. You know what I mean. Um. And a lot of it is because it's just like, it's nothing that I haven't seen when it comes to this game. So a lot right. of it is like shit. I can't wait to go out here. Like, and like the crowd, like the energy in the stadium, like. That shit has me like it. It is. I, I still feel like a kid when it comes to the game. Mm. So um, I still enjoy it, man. It's a beautiful feeling. Can't beat that shit, bro. You can't. <laughs> you can't. You can't, man. Because it's 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 nothing else that the feeling that I have on game day. It's nothing else that I do or have done outside of football that gives me that feeling. I mean, obviously having, I mean, my babies and stuff like that. That's, that's, I feel like that's totally different. That's a different, you know, arena. Right. But like the, the anxiousness, like the, you know, that, that's, that feeling I have in my stomach, like that, like finna go play football. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. it's like, I, I don't know, man. It's it's yeah. a, it's a, it's, a, it's a weird. It's a crazy feeling. It is, and yeah. I'm sure you've had that feeling. No, for sure, for sure. It's uh, like when you're going out before you're about to play a football game. One, you it's just a mix of so many different emotions. Right. It's confidence, right? It's the anxiousness. You know, you want it to go well. Yeah. It's also knowing that like it's a violent game. You know what I mean? Like. Count your blessings every every game, every play. And uh it's just a presence of mind. Right. Like when you're in that locker room in pregame, you are nowhere else except in that locker room. Cause you gotta be. Right. You go out onto the field and you looking up into the, the stands, right? And all the fans and all the people and it's going crazy. You are right there in that moment. More present than you probably ever are in other phases of your life. And everything else, maybe you, your mind could be drifting and doing this and doing yeah. that. But when you're playing a football game, you are right there. <laughs> wherever you're standing on that field, you wherever gotta, your feet are, that's where you are. You got to be locked in. Yeah. You got to be locked in. Yeah. It takes a special person to be able to, a lot of, like you said, a lot of times you do stuff, you can drift off and your mind and stuff might be other places, you know, but you might not be where you are physically. Yeah. I mean, right. With football, you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> you won't last. You can't do that. Yeah. It's it's the I still get a kick out of it. Man. Yeah. Every That's second cool, of man. it. Every second of it. Like I I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. Every second of it. Yeah. And like you said, it's a viol- it's it's violence. That's just fun. <laughs> yeah, it's I like you're it. going to war. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it, and then and then the, and the thing the thing with that too is just like the other guys that are in 
it's the moment, the situation with you. That's yeah. why, you know what I mean? That's Hell why you yeah. become so close with these guys and have these, you know, these relationships long-term after ball because it's just like, yo, if you my dog, like, you on my team, especially if you're a DB, if you on my, but if you are on my team, like, I spend, I'm going to spend a lot of time with you. I spend more time with you than I spend with, with you know, family. But, like, knowing that you're going through the same stuff that I'm going through, and I can look you in your eyes, and I can tell you got that same feeling I have on Sundays. Man, it ain't nothing like it. Yeah, that's a bond right man, there. You it bonded. It's, it's, <laughs> it's literally nothing like it. Yeah, nothing like it, man. Man, that's well put. That's well put. So, like you said, you're uh, you're the OG in the locker room now. Yeah, man. And, uh, Fourteen seasons, thirty five years young. You uh. You got some young whippersnappers in the in the locker room with you. A lot of two thousands babies that you playing with now. That shit's crazy. It's nuts. It's crazy because <laughs> the difference in music. Oh yeah, night and day. When they put stuff on and I'm like, who is this? <laughs> and they like looking at me like I got two heads. I'm like, nah, seriously, like who is this? Like I, I don't, I don't know any of these you artists. Fuck with it. Are you liking it? Some of the music? Nah, it's trash. Terrible. It's awful, bro. It's like like who? Some of it's some of it's all right, man. A lot of these dudes, I don't even know who they are. Like I'm just listening. I'm just like, I have no clue what they're listening to. Some of it's straight though. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's like a um. Bro, I, I like when that. I legit feel like the old guy. It's just like obviously I'm the oldest in the locker room. You still um, putting the young Jeezy on? You know me. <laughs> you know they me. looking at you crazy. You know me. <laughs> they looking like yo, what Jeezy Ti? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one in there like this, and they looking at me like oh, right. The music that was booming before yeah, they was they born. Like, oh, turn this off. What is who? I'm like, yo, show some respect. That's why I always I had to always tell them that, yo, show some respect. But man, it's uh, it's been cool though, man. Yeah, being the older guy in the locker room, man, it's it's just listening, you know, to all, all these younger guys, man, and seeing how they live in and all the stuff that they do, man. Um, like you said, it's it's definitely a night and day difference, man. But I appreciate it for sure, and I don't, I definitely don't take it for granted, man. Um, being able to be the guy that everybody can come to. Right. You know, um, not just defensively, but offensively as well. Um, it's uh it's cool. It's, yeah. it's cool to be in that to be in that position, man, to being to be seen, you know, in that light. Um because I've been in some locker rooms where the older guy might not have been the one everybody wanna to go to. So to be that guy, man, I try to bridge all the gaps. As much as I can, um, and help those dudes however I can, man. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's cool to hear that you've embraced the leadership role on the team. Is there? Is there? Um, how do you make sure to like lead some of those younger guys? Is there something that you always make sure to tell them, like some kind of to uh, token of advice or guidance that you want to leave with younger dudes that you come across? Um, for me, man, I think the best way is to just be more of a of a listener. Right. I mean, um, because everybody got different struggles. Um, whether it's, you know, life or whether it's ball. So for me, just trying to listen to whatever they're going through at that moment or, you know, whatever the situation may be. So I just try to, you know, kind of keep my ears ears to the ground or if guys come to me, you know what I mean? And and that's a, that's another thing about the league too. I mean, obviously being in the locker room with these guys, everybody's from a different walk of life. Mm -hmm. So being a, a listener is, you know, a suit. Well, be better, you know, um, in these situations. So I just try to listen to them, man, whatever they come to me with, man. Just try to give them yeah. the best advice I can. You know, um, because nine times out of ten, a lot of the stuff that they going through, I've probably been through it or, right. you know, so 
Just yeah. being more of a listener. Yeah, no, that's cool. <clears throat> my last season in uh, Miami, there was a young dude, Trill Williams. Uh, he's defensive back. I forget where he played college ball at. But uh, good dude, funny kid. Like, uh, you know, it's like to dress. He liked to yeah. show out. He's a good player, too. And we got on the roll. Like, every week we would have uh, – after I think it was our Saturday walkthrough, we do like a like a wisdom Saturday, and so on our way from like the walkthrough, walking back into the locker room, I try to leave him with a little piece of advice. Right. Something that's like simple, nah, that's, you know, how much tough. he like really listened to me and how much he did. Like it was kind of like a joke, like hey, give me some wisdom today, and I drop some like something simple, like when you're holding your money, make sure you. Put it in the savings account that get you some interest, right? Because then you right. put some cash in your pocket. You know, just like little simple yeah. shit that, you know, maybe I, I oversee. Yeah. Nah, little nuggets. That I picked up along the way and give it back to him. And I think that's a that's that's one of the uh, coolest parts about being an older guy in a, in a locker room yeah. or, or a veteran, really in any, uh, in any arena, whether it's you're on a football team or uh, or in the office or whatever, being able to – you know, help somebody along the way, give them a piece of advice that you had to find out on your own or somebody that somebody had given to you that really helped you out. Yeah, because, like, and I, 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 I tell guys this and I stand on this, you know, my thing is you might not remember what I did on third and three and whatever game, but you'll always remember how I might have helped you or impacted your life right. outside of ball. You know what right. I mean? So that's why I like we still do our D B nights. You know, we was big on doing <clears> that <throat> in Houston. Every yeah. Thursday night is D B night. Like I got for me, I'm gonna hang out when I I I'm gonna hang out as long as I can those Thursday nights. But for the guys, like, yo, give get the get the fellas an hour or two hours, man. Like, because I feel like those nights are separate from actually being in the locker room and ball because it's just like, man, you never know what somebody's going through. But if we in the locker room together, I'm playing with you, like you my real, you my brother, like you're my brother. So I want to know what you're going through. I want to know what's what, like, and yeah. how I can help you. So spending real time with you, that should make a difference, man. So mm-hmm. when then we go out there on Sundays, yeah, I'm gonna run through the wall for you. Yeah. My dog. Mm-hmm. We spend real time together. My I'm gonna dad. run through the wall for you. Yeah. And it's it's crazy because it's like a lot of the a lot of the other position groups, man. They ask, they be like, Jack, how do I get my group as tight as your group? I'm like, man, we spend real time together. Mm-hmm. Like, we hang out every Thursday. We take a trip after the season together. Right. Like, we spend real time together. So, yeah. it should make a difference, though, man. <clears throat> for sure, for sure. If you, uh, I always believe this. If you get drunk with somebody, you connect different with them. Different. After that, it's different. <laughs> the bond, the bond is different. If you, if y'all have a night out together, you just y'all just on a different level than you were the day before. Yeah, it's different. It's different. I feel like that's so true in locker rooms. You know what I mean? Uh, and on yeah. teams. And on Thursdays, we have it flowing too. <laughs> yeah. we have it flowing. I went to a couple of those DB nights. Come on, man, we have it flowing, man. We're gonna, <laughs> hey, we're gonna enjoy this shit. We ain't gonna be here. Like, hey, we ain't here for a long time now. We here for a good time. That's a fact. Gotta enjoy it, man. Gotta enjoy it. No doubt. No doubt. <clears throat> Want to change gears to uh, KJAC TV? Yeah. KJAC TV is back. Gotta have you on, man. Hey, I'm hell yeah. We got to have you on. Like I said, bro. KJAC TV laid the foundation for Beast Car TV. We got to have you on, man. We uh, obviously was just doing the whole locker room thing. and Yeah. But now we uh, changed the format and doing more of a podcast thing, man. We just had Patrick Sertain on. About to drop that episode. Uh, Had Justin Simmons on the first episode, man. So – Looking to build it, looking to build it, and, yeah. you know, do some do some incredible things, you know, moving forward, man. But it's uh, it's been fun, man. It's been fun. Yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun, man. I'm, I'm a huge wine enthusiast, so we kind of, you know, threw that in the mix as well. 
Uh, but no, it's been fun. It's been fun. That's what's up. You're great at it, bro. I appreciate yeah, the it, player, man. The player reporter shit was funny, bro. I appreciate it, man. I had a lot of fun with that, man. <laughs> I had a, a, a lot of fun <laughs> with that, man. Yeah. And just uh, just showing the guys, you know, the, the personalities of the guys, man. Yeah. For me, that's what it was about, man, because, you know, obviously seeing us with helmets and, you know, just on the field and being, you know, serious about the game and stuff like that, but to – to showcase guys' real personalities, you know, in the locker room, just having fun and smiling and, you know, all the different things that came along with it, man. That was, uh, that was, that was like the, the best part for me. Yeah. <clears throat> so you're going to keep it rolling with the podcast. Are you going to get into, you think you want to get into commentary or like yeah, being on TV? I do. That's what I want to do when I'm done. Yeah. That's what I do. That's what I want to do when I'm done. Like I said, I'm going to do the boot camp this off season. Okay. And then hopefully, man, you know, things can take off from there, man. Got a lot of guys go to that boot camp and get a job as soon as they're done. Yeah. So hopefully I can get a job and kind of stay around the sport and, you know, um, still have to watch film and all that other good stuff, man. Right. So yeah. that's what I want to do. That's cool. I will say, man, the NFL is super supportive. Yeah. I think not just with the broadcast boot camp, but then they do the social media right. programming and, <clears throat> for some of the stuff that we're doing with the creative agency and the video content stuff, they've been super supportive. Like, it's not just one or two people. It's everybody within, you know, the league. And I think it it uh, it really feels like they want us to win. Yeah. Not just, you know, in the game, but outside of the game as well. Right. So I've had, a, I've had a great experience working with them. So. Yeah, no, nah, that's dope. That's yeah. dope, man. But, yeah, definitely – Got to get you on KJAC TV, man. I appreciate you having me. So, hell yeah, definitely got to have Let's you do on, it. man. Let's do it, definitely, no doubt. Well, shit, man, we got a hell of a conversation here. Okay, yeah, we got to get one more, and then we gonna uh, <laughs> we're gonna have a, hey, hey we're gonna have a nice little night out tonight, man. Uh, this man, this man, KJAC. You already you, you got me burning it at both ends. Come on, man. You I've been on the road. I was in LA. It's only right. Did it man. up for a couple nights. You can't come out here and not hang out with me. You know, you know, like you see the pressure this man putting on me because you're not lying. I, you're not lying. I would never come to Portland and not hang out with you. That's a fact. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I would never come and not hang out with you. We got some Sincoro flowing. We got some high quality conversation. Uh, we got uh, the way we end our our shows is we do high quality questions, and so we got some rapid fire questions for you. Let's do it. What's an album you can listen to with no skips? No skips. No skips. The Carter. The Carter. The Carter. One. Both of them, one and two. One and two. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Order. Oh, uh, blueprint. 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 Yeah. The blueprint. That's your favorite Jay Z album. Album. That a reasonable doubt. I like. Yeah, I like the reason. Yeah. I'm, B Scar, man, we are gonna have a hell of a night, dog. That's I know. Hey, I, yo, I, I, I know you. You my dog. You're a classic man. So classic. You're a classic man. Where was your favorite place to shop in middle school? Ooh, I had to say Macy's. Macy's. Yeah. Okay. Middle school, yeah, Macy's. I'll go in there and get me some Jabos or some shit like that. <laughs> Jabos. Remember them joints? Yeah, that's Jabos that's cool. jeans. Yeah, people yeah. going to be like, what the hell are Jabos? Crazy. Jabos, first pair of forces, tall T. Man. Easy. Easy. If you could take a shot with any ce- athlete or celebrity, who would it be and what would it be a shot of? LeBron. LeBron James. We gotta drink Lobos if we gonna if we gonna have a shot with LeBron. And Yeho? Yeho got to be. Got to be Yeho. Got to be. Bron. Bron my the hey, king. The king. Yeah. King, my favorite. You ever met Bron? I, I met him one time before, man, um, in Atlanta. And I'm a huge LeBron fan, man. I I used to travel to go watch him play. So really? They, at one point in time, they was always getting the Hawks in the first round of the playoffs. So I ended up going to a game um, when I was still playing in Houston. Mm. I would go to the games and then, you know, come back. Boy, didn't but anyway, so they played and I'm staying at the W. Me and one of my best boys sitting at the bar. And 
I look, we, you know, we have a couple of drinks after the game, and boom, LeBron walk in. It's LeBron, um, Channing Fry, um, it's like five or six of them, man. They go to a little club that was uh, at the W at the time. So, shit, I'm like, shit, we got to go to the club too. So <laughs> yeah. We end up going to get a table, like two tables down from him, man. I end up sending them, sending those guys a bottle, man, and LeBron and a couple of guys, you know, stopping by, just hollering at me and stuff. That's man. what's up. So it was, it was dope, man. But I, I've never, like, really had a chance to really, like, you know, meet them outside of, like, that type of setting and right. sit down and talk to them. But, man, that's... It's like my favorite athlete of all time. Yeah, that's yeah, dope. Yeah, LeBron, my God. Man. Every encounter I've had with LeBron and every story that I've heard is similar to that one. Yeah, dog. like just a cool dude. Yeah, cool. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he cool. He cool. Yeah, for sure. he cool for sure. Down to earth. That's what's up. What's your biggest football ick? My biggest football ick. Yeah. Like, what part of football makes you go ick? The rules now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The rules, the fines, suspension. Yeah. All that. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, ick. Jack, I, they got a down payment off you on this last, this last one. They did. They did. <laughs> they did. I, I, it's it, the ick, yeah. It's that's a, sure that's ick. icky. <laughs> it's for sure ick, to say the least. Yeah. I don't want to say some of the other stuff I want to say about yeah. it, but no doubt. we're just going to say ick. That's a Nick. And that wraps our high quality questions, man. Okay, Jack. Jack boy, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Man, I appreciate you having me, man. Of course, of yes, course. sir. We gotta get hey, we gotta have one more. Yeah, we have another nice, uh, we've been uh, sipping on some Sincoro. Just did to get Ripple the thing started tonight. I, pre- <coughs> I appreciate you. appreciate you bringing me that, man. Oh, of course, you. bro. I appreciate you giving us your time, man. B Scar TV. It's very appreciative. We man, I got a lot of extra time on my hands right now, man. I ain't mm-hmm. doing that. Um, yeah. Can't play no football right now, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we can uh, drink some Sincoro and and talk, talk some shit. Hey, every time, <laughs> every time, baby, every time. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. Another episode of B Scar TV. Please drop a comment, subscribe, give us some constructive criticism. Because we're always trying to get better. And the pursuit of high quality content is a never ending pursuit. Till next time. Peace. This episode of B Scar TV has been brought to you by Scarlet Creative. For the full length video episode and more content, find us on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at B Scar TV. And please leave us a review. Drop a comment. What do you want to see? What do you want to hear? Who do you want to hear from? We would love to hear from you. This is your host, with the most, Brennan Scarlett, signing off. Peace. Peace.